Hello everyone and welcome to Park Art Center. I'm very excited to introduce you to a very talented artist. His name is Jason Shuckhart and he is uh, currently exhibiting at Park Art Center as a solo artist and um, has a very exciting work uh, and I'm, I'm really excited to have him and we're very fortunate that we have met him. Um, so Jason, hello and welcome. Um, I just want to, the show is titled Innuendo, so I'm, I'm curious about why you chose that title for the show? Well, first of all, thanks for um, inviting me to show my work here at the Park Art Center. Um, Innuendos is really um, indirectly referencing something without actually saying it. And I think a lot of my work is really is, I create work that draws you in. I don't specifically create anything with any particular message or imagery. It's really made to, to draw a viewer into the piece to look at it and kind of really come up with their own thought of what the piece represents. So in general you don't have any kind of um, goal or like theme or anything? Uh, I think the, the overall theme of a lot of my work would be really just um, human images um, and in most of the work. Um, and, I, and when I do that it's just I really have no process of create of choosing the images. It's almost like they choose me. I just take them and I put them on onto canvas, um, whether they be whether they're photographs or they're the organic human human images that I've created on the canvas. Okay. Um, and it just becomes what it becomes. I mean. Yeah. I. I I mean, I'm very drawn to your work, obviously, but um, one of my questions is, like, the different mediums that you use. I, I see a lot of texture in some of your work, and that that is very attractive to me, um, and how you place that in composition, and, you know, how do you choose the mediums? What mediums do you use for most pieces? Well, most, most pieces um, are just acrylic mediums um, and layers of acrylic paint and, and gel mediums to create the texture. Um, and then every single piece that I do, my final step is I actually use wood stain on the canvas and on the paint, and I and I just put a layer of that oh, on I didn't it. Know that. I rub it in, um, and then I wipe it off. And okay. I think when you, you're using texture, um, it really kind of gets there in the grooves, and it really brings out the texture more than anything else. Right. And oh, yeah. honestly, there's a lot of pieces that I think I'm done with, mm -hmm. and. I keep looking at it, and I'm not happy with it, and when I do that final step, it's almost a signature step for me when I do that. It's like, when closure. it's done, it's clo it is, <laughs> yeah. it's closure for that. that. And I and that's when I'm like, okay, finally, I think it's done. Yeah. So. Oh, you're so lucky, because many, many artists, uh, yeah, they don't, it's, the work is never finished. Do you still feel that way? Or? Oh, I, I, okay. there's, there's some pieces that I have <laughs> that have been many, many different pieces. Um, if you were able to peel back layer by layer yes. the pieces, you're going to find other images underneath it. Um, like um, Aura, for example. Mm -hmm. um, that is not how that painting started at all. And it, it's actually been many different paintings. Paintings that I, I just didn't like anymore, mm -hmm. or I just, wasn't hap I, I just I wasn't happy with how it turned out. So I would go back at it and it would just completely change. I, and just like the images chooses you, the painting's choosing you as it well. It does, yeah. it does. And like with Aura, how I, I created that image on that is I actually, and you can tell when you get up close and look at the textures, a lot of that is old paint that I actually took a palette knife and I actually carved out oh, the wow. image, mm -hmm. which helped that the gray that's in that is actually another painting underneath it, and I, and I carved that out. So. Oh, interesting. I always wondered, you know, looking so close to your paintings that I, I'm so curious to know how that was done, so <laughs> I'm satisfied with that. There you go, there's my secret. <laughs> yeah, that's so. great. I mean, even your framing of the work, I know that you're a perfectionist, which um, your work is beautiful, and it's, it's so finished to me, every piece that I've seen. Um, can you maybe explain uh, your self-portrait that you did? Um, well, the self-portrait came about when I was creating a few new pieces for the exhibition. Um, I, you know, I've, I've had the majority of these pieces um, in my collection for a long time, but I, and a lot of people have seen them already, and I wanted to create some new, some new pieces. 
So that came about, again, was an old canvas that I had mm -hmm. and a piece that I didn't like. And I, um, and I just thought I really needed to do a piece that kind of represented me. Um, my big thing, being an interior designer, being a, kind of a perfectionist, don't open any drawers or cabinets in my house. But I wanted when people walked in to get a, a particular feel for the show. And I thought, I'm going to do a self-portrait. Okay, that was my other question, was how does your, your other work that you do influence your art? So you're definitely... In, interior design, texture, uh -huh. color, right. um, the framing. I mean, it's, I don't think, I think you can have a beautiful piece of artwork, but it, it's never going to look finished unless you take that last step and you, and you finish it off with the framing. Um, it, it also adds another dimension to the mm -hmm. piece. It's not just a canvas floating on the wall. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like simple framing. I don't think it needs to distract. It doesn't have to be an ornate frame. Mm -hmm. It just has to clean up the piece. Yes, so. very fitting. And I do build it all myself. I, you know, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and I think it just finishes it. Yes, it's a great skill to have. There's a lot of us that would love to do that. Um, but yeah, it's very fitting, very finished. Sort of industrial looking for me, yeah. which I'm very attracted to. Um, so, what is your favorite? What's your favorite um, piece? Well, that's a hard question. Yeah. Um, they all. I mean, my older pieces. Um, I love um, Scrum, which is rugby players that I've created that sort of look like they're just floating um, in the on the canvas. Mm -hmm. um, I love that piece. It actually hangs above my bed. Um, it's one of the pieces that if I ever have to let go of it, I will be sad about that. But, you know, you have to let go sometimes. Yes. Um, so that's one of my older pieces. Um, one of the newer pieces I love um, is Golden Muse. Another piece that has evolved over time. Um, originally it was light and airy and sort of like aura, but I, I, I am drawn to dark images. Um, so I just continue to work on that piece. Um, I love how it turned out. I love how dark it is. I love how you really have to look at it to find the image that's in it. Um, and then I love the my most recent pieces, which is the series um, the C and No, one through four, and it's just the guy, the the men with the orange. Um, across their eyes. Yes, I, I find those are really, to be really striking. They are very striking, so. very strong pieces. And their size, they're small pieces, mm -hmm. but they're, you, they really draw you in. Absolutely. And the texture turned out really, I was really happy with how the texture turned out on those pieces. Yes, yes, so. that's exciting, so exciting, I love your work. Um, what inspires you most? Everything. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a very visual person, I mean, based on my career and Every, I mean, I walk into any space, I, I, I notice everything. Um, and which could be a fault at times of mine, but it is, I'm inspired by so much stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a, it, just everything. I live my life as being kind of inspired by nice things. Yeah. And I can find beauty in pretty much anything. Um, and. Is there anything it like in particular that um, have, you have experienced in life that is maybe drawn to you? Because I've noticed there's a lot of footballs, you know, it's kind of some sports. <coughs> I'm so not so a I'm sports just guy. I just, yeah. I think it's just kind of the, um, kind of just that masculine um, imagery um, that, that I'm drawn to. Um, I was, I, however, did introduce female images also um, and so I think I've just it was drawn to the images mm -hmm. um, and I thought they were stark images and they weren't they really kind of push the boundaries it, it, it pushes boundaries and makes you think um, sometimes it might it's homoerotic it it's um, but then you throw in a female image and it, it completely throws that off and it makes you think about what does this mean like and so when I say that my work, sometimes I don't think about it. Sometimes maybe I do, and I don't, I don't um, purposely go out and put an image on a thing. And it kind of has takes it takes on that the life itself and makes you think and makes you come up with. And there's a couple pieces in my collection that that kind of make you question that. 
So yeah, there is a lot of questions. I mean, we had a lot of questions during the opening. Yeah. And um, we had such great feedback from our guests about your work, and we're we're very excited to have you here. I'm very excited too. This has been a wonderful opportunity. Um, I love listening to people at, at the opening. Yeah. And I, I would stand back and listen to people, um, or they would ask me questions, and or we would just talk about the pieces. And I would I'd love hearing what people's definition is of my work or mm -hmm. what their thought is, um, whether I agree with it or disagree with uh -huh. it. Um, especially like in our in like the more abstract pieces that aren't they don't have a image image in them. What people can come up with what they see mm -hmm. is so interesting. You know, yeah. I, there's this one piece, um, and I forget the name of it, um, but it's kind of four sections with the, with the image in the middle of it. Um, I think it's called Passing Through. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people tell me that they felt it was a political statement. Mm -hmm. They saw it as kind of a flag in the background. They, they've seen so many different things in it. Was that a common response from it was, and it's, and I find it was, and I and I find that interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I had um, one person ask me about um, um, fire and ice, which is a smaller piece, and what what it really was, and I, and I really had to give in and just say it. it's a part of my landscape series because it I didn't create it to be anything. I just like the use of the colors and the texture mm -hmm. in it. Um, but I guess with those more those pieces like that, I would put them into a landscape category. Um, then there's pigskin, which was a a piece that I just was playing around with, and I loved how it turned out. And it actually turned out to look more like a football, like a pigskin. Well, um, tell me what your dream project is. Mm, that's a good question. I um, being an interior designer and an artist, my dream project would do to be to do a hotel lobby. Like you have full range of the interior, the furniture, the, the, entire the, the artwork, everything that would be my dream project. Why a hotel lobby? Um, because I think hotel, hotel lobbies is when, or even just a corporate lobby, when you walk mm -hmm. into, it's the first impression and it's okay. the wow factor that you can create with things. And I think that a lot of companies and a lot of hotels are willing to go big Mm -hmm. that, and that would be really my dream project to, to do. Um, Start I, on that proposal. <laughs> it is. I know I should. I, I, I really should. Um, I think you could having do a, it. Having, having a background where I was doing corporate, some corporate build-outs in the city, in offices, the, one of the main things is always how, how the lobby represents um, the company mm -hmm. or the hotel chain or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's just being wild. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, another question is, can you name three artists you would like to be compared to? No. <laughs> I, I like I, the answer. I can't, well, you know, it's <laughs> funny because I am self-taught. Uh -huh. um, I was accepted to art school to the Milwaukee Institute for Art and Design. I decided not to pursue that. To pursue that. Um, part of my thinking back then when I was young and foolish was, I don't want somebody to tell me or dictate to me how to be creative. Um, and I actually get a little annoyed by people that are educated in the art field or maybe overly educated when they, when they go to a gallery or they meet an artist and they look at work and they, and they feel the need to, to reference other artists. Instead of seeing it for being an individual artist or something new or something different, there's always that reference point. And I find that a little annoying. Sometimes I find it maybe a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, you now, being influenced by artists or in, or being drawn to artists, yeah, I'm drawn Different. to artists. Yeah. Everything from one of my favorite paintings is Christina's World by Andrew Wyeth. I love that painting for whatever reason. Actually, mm -hmm. the, maybe the way I float images, it kind of references that kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, but then I love Keith Haring and Banksy and everything mm -hmm. in yeah. between. I mean, I, I really am drawn, it's like music, you know, you're drawn to country music and rap, um, like I am. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I don't want to be compared to another yeah. artist. Um, I want it to be stand on its own. Yeah, um, I, 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 I respect that. I, 
Um, but you, you know, as an artist, I don't think we can be an artist without being influenced some way or another, directly right. or indirectly. It's right? it's and true. Maybe, it's true, and I and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. Um, actually, my darker pieces, um, like um, let's just say some of the ones with the, the two males um, surrounded by light. I can say I was probably influenced when I was in Edinburgh, Scotland. I went to their museum, the art museum there, looking at these amazing Renaissance paintings. Huge. I mean, they were like just amazing in the detail and walking up and looking at them. I was so drawn to them, but as, as I looked across that gallery, I saw this little piece of art across the gallery mm -hmm that would, it just looked like a black canvas. So I, I walked up to it, I got close to it, and there was actually an image, a human image in there that was surrounded by candlelight, and the rest of the canvas was black. And I think that that might have influenced some of my later work. Oh. Um, unfortunately, I don't know who this artist is mm -hmm. because it's a museum, you're not allowed to take photos. So I took my phone and I snapped a photo of the little plaque. and. <laughs> only to leave the museum and look down and see that my data was full. My I had no more storage, so I couldn't like. You're so funny. <laughs> I, I have no idea who this artist was, and She's laughing. so that. But that that did, I think, did probably influence yeah, some well, of my later. Work. I mean, something. I mean, might not be important to know the name. You know, it's an image that captured you. It's something, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, please stop by. The show um, goes until November 7th, and our hours here at Park Art Center, 9 East Park Boulevard in Villa Park, is 11 to 5, Tuesday through Saturday, and all the work is for sale. It is, it's actually for sale, and you know, all the sales that help, help um, with the mission of the Park Art Center, which is one of the, the things that draw, really drew me in to show my work here at the, at the center, and amazing staff, and um, help them out. It'd be great. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much for coming. You're welcome. <laughs>